Thank you for staying with us. Now, whilst the world is making progress towards ensuring that energy is becoming more sustainable and widely available, more than three quarters of a billion Africans still have no access to electricity. Countries like Kenya, though, have gone to great lengths in meeting the United Nations Sustainable Goal Number 7. My panelists, who are experts in renewable energy, will make, help make sense of this intricate discussion. Luke Burris is the CEO of Mobile Power, and they offer pay per swap battery uh, sharing networks. Interesting. Luke, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Jenny Fletcher is the CEO of uh, Area Affinity. Uh, and she's speaking to us from Nairobi, Kenya, industry leader in supply and financing clean energy. Christophe Fenferian, director of Africa, the Carbon Trust, and they pioneering decarbonizing for more than 20 years for businesses. And Infantis Kamweru, he's the acting general manager, Rural Electrification and Renewable Energy Corporation, tackling subsidized electricity in rural areas. A very good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for your time. Christelle, let me start off uh, with you, and your role really is about protecting the environment, uh, is it not? Certainly when you look at the carbon footprint and how you can mitigate those issues. Yes, indeed. I mean, a carbon trust is very much oriented towards accelerating decarbonization of economies and acting to support the journey to net zero. And whether that's working with governments, uh, or with private sector actors and with individual entities uh, and with grassroots operators uh, to really drive that forward in a very kind of ecosystem and holistic way. Um, but there's lots to be done. <laughs> and uh, the topic today is definitely one of the ones that are close to Carbon Trust's heart um, in terms of the, the really leapfrog opportunity that there is for the African continent. Um, not so much from a decarbonization perspective because it's uh, really about climate justice for the continent um, in being able to access and grow those burgeoning new opportunities for clean energy. Fantastic. Now, we're talking about keeping the lights on uh, in, in Africa, or certainly turning them on in, in many instances. Now, Luke, there's certain things that you're doing. I mean, we're talking about paper swap battery uh, sharing networks. This is something I've only come across when researching uh, for, for this interview. Talk to us about what that is very quickly, please. Yeah, there are 600 million um, people in sub-Saharan Africa who don't have access to electricity. And really, um, mobile power is about bringing an appropriate technology solution to those consumers so we can get them on the first ladder of getting access to electricity. We started with our first product back in 2013, um, doing mobile phone charging. And today we are doing that with, with, with first access to energy but we're also working with uh, middle class customers with generator replacement and e-mobility as well in capital cities. Really looking at how you can decarbonize an economy as well as bringing people into, into that economy and into that electrified world. Fantastic. Now, Ifantis, one of the things that we, we talk about is the, the average uh, rate of electricity on, on the African continent which is slightly less than half, I think it's at 43%. But Kenya has done a huge amount in, in ensuring that uh, a lot of renewable energy, in fact, I think uh, upwards of 80%, or in fact, it's slightly above 70% of renewable uh, of electricity is focused on renewable energy in Kenya. How has Kenya achieved this? Actually, thanks a lot. Uh, Kenya is uh, okay. It's very dynamic in the area of uh, electrification because actually there's a lot of government support when it comes to the energy. It started back in 19 uh, with the fission 2030, which was started in 2008, when there was a blueprint for energy and uh, electrification of the rural areas across the country. And that's the blueprint which has been guiding Kenya subsequent government in electrification of uh, in rural areas, especially even using renewable energy. So we can see that uh, there are many, a lot, many support in areas like policies, national development plans, co collaborating with the partners, effective regulatory frameworks. All of them have played a part in making sure that Kenya is able to embrace renewable energy. In fact, Kenya government has been playing a lot of law in participating in climate changes. Or it has been adhering to Paris Declaration. All of them it has been supporting them. So what I can say in short is that Kenya government has really supported promotion of renewable energy. And after all, Kenya is also a blessed country. 
because where it is located, it has enough sun, sunlight. Geothermal is also available. So the government has been enhancing that energy to make sure we have clean energy by 2030. Thank you. Now, Jenny, one of the roles that you play is that of financing clean energy. And if we look at uh, just how much renewable energy um, is available uh, to us or how many countries have taken up uh, renewable energy, there are a very, very small number on the, on the African continent, certainly not many that uh, have done as much as, uh, as Kenya. What are some of the challenges um, in, in financing um, clean energy, firstly, and, and secondly, is there a huge uptake on the continent for clean energy? So uh, the challenges, uh, I'll take the first question. So challenges are really around the regulatory environment. And so international capital being comfortable financing the, the country risk. So, of course, you've got your normal company risk, but then on top of the company risk, you have the country risk. And some of the countries, especially the ones with the lower uh, electrification rates, may not have a strong regulatory environment or a strong government support. And that makes financing difficult. Um, we're on the ground, so we are comfortable financing, you know, and certainly throughout East Africa. Um, but we would be not necessarily comfortable financing every country in Africa. Um, uh, remind me your second question. Well, if, 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 you'll, if you'll allow me, uh, I'd like to obviously keep, keep it moving. And, and I've got sure. a question that I'd like to ask Christelle. Now, Christelle, sure. South Africa's energy minister dismissed the notion that uh, renewable electricity can bring an end to years of load shedding. Right. So he's potentially advocating for, for fossil fuels. You, on the other hand, are advocating uh, against fossil fuels because what you're fighting for is a, what you're fighting against is, is a carbon f footprint. How do you marry uh, those two, particularly in this South African context? Uh, you asked me a complex question, <laughs> I think. Um, and so I'm not going to necessarily respond directly to Minister Mantashi's comments um, or the general the political positioning and the challenges internal to South Africa and ESCOM uh, right at this juncture, um, but to say that there are things that we can learn from others. Um, and I think that this is a developing narrative at any rate, uh, both in South Africa and the continent around the role that fossil fuels play um, in that development trajectory. Uh, the dynamics of energy economics is changing. Um, and I think that is also uh, really important for us to keep abreast of the socioeconomic development uh, agenda that has to be met. I mean, that is an imperative. So while we as Carbon Trust certainly um, are proponents for renewable clean and doing that as a priority and first, um, we are appreciative at any rate of the dynamics and challenges that these particular countries are situated with um, and that it's not necessarily always an easy choice. Um, now, as I said, aside from Antashi's comments, um, I think Efantis made some comments around what Kenya has done um, and that those are some lessons to be learned around security of tenure, uh, reliable pricing mechanisms, uh, favorable policies and incentives and really making it attractive for investors. Um, and I think those are lessons that others in the continent can take away uh, in their own development contexts uh, for the renewable story. Uh, Luke, fin final question, and I'm hoping that I can get all of you to, to, crip in, to crip in on this. Now, we've just talked about three quarters of the continent uh, not having access to, to, to energy, right? Uh, Luke, I believe you're doing some work in, in Nigeria. Uh, why Nigeria? Is it, yes. is, it, is it representative of the challenges, the general challenges of the African continent? And just how do we bring light to, to the African continent? I mean, we talked about the amount of sunlight um, that Ifantis uh, talk, talked about. And, and there's and the sun across the entire continent. Absolutely. And uh, I think you can tell from my accent that I'm, uh, I'm not African, I'm, I'm British. But one of the reasons that I've, I've, I've pointed my career at Sub-Saharan Africa is I think it has one of the most uniquely exciting opportunities to redefine the way in which we do energy across the globe. Traditional energy grids um, are expensive to run and they were built at a time when we didn't have renewables. Renewables really have the opportunity to recast the way in which we distribute our electricity um, and the way in which we reach people with electricity. 
Nigeria stands right in the center of that. It's got a growing, young, vibrant entrepreneurial population who are looking for solutions, who are looking at the way the rest of the world works and then applying that to Nigeria. And that's really what Mobile Power is doing there. We empower local entrepreneurs with technology that's been developed in other countries and then apply it into that marketplace and really watch watch what people do with that and, and, and the amazing entrepreneurs that we work with who are expanding that. I, I think it's it's that grid opportunity mm. and redefining how the grid works that's exciting about sub-Saharan Africa. Now, Fantas, you've obviously been able to, to harness um, the what nature has, has to offer. Uh, what's your advice to you to the rest of the continent in, in doing uh, the same? I mean, you've achieved so much success in this area. You see, like in Kenya, it is uh, the objective. All Kenyans are equal, whether you are in off-grid areas or if, even in the city. So the determination by the government to ensure that all Kenyans deserve to get clean energy and also access to electricity is the key goal here in, in our country. Because right now we are able to electrify 5,000 schools using solar system in the off-grid areas. That means even if you're in off-grid areas, you are going to have access to the power. You pay the same rate like the person in urban area because there's even government subsidy for, the, for those who are paying power in those remote areas. Although the cost for generating power there is very high when you're using the solar and also mini grid systems. So I can say that it's a determination and to have a good national development plans, legal framework, all of them effective regulatory framework, all of them are factors which are able to drive country to have a focus and interest in energy. In any case, energy is enabler and you, without energy you cannot prosper, you cannot industrialize like other countries before used to have coal, but Kenya now is focused on using renewable energy to develop. Thank you. Unfortunately, I can't uh, get uh, Jenny or anybody else to, to comment on what I would, what I would have asked, uh, but I do appreciate uh, my panelists uh, this evening. Uh, Luke Burris, CEO of Mobile Power, Jenny Fletcher, CEO of uh, Aria Finergy, Christoph and Fuhrer, Director, Africa, the Carbon Trust, and Infantis Gamwiri, Acting General Manager, Rural Electrification and Renewable Energy Corporation. A very good evening once again to all of you, and thank you so much for your time this evening. And we were talking about keeping Africa's lights on and the advancement of renewable energy.